I will start my my talk. Um, actually, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, as for the uh, motto, I selected this uh, sentence uh, written by Professor uh, Vladimir Arnold. And as you see, this is about uh, what actually mathematics is. Yeah. So I will not read. Yeah. So probably you will read it uh, quicker than me. Uh, but uh, you know, so probably everybody can sign yeah this uh, assertion. Yeah, actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the talk uh, today yeah is um, is just the uh, work in progress. For many years, I was working in the field of fuzzy modeling, and uh, um, uh, I tried fuzzy models in many subjects uh, in um, numerical uh, computations uh, uh, and also in applications to um, uh, image processing, computer vision. And uh, now also uh, we are looking all of us uh, how the traditional mathematics can be uh, useful for neural network uh, explanation. So therefore, this talk is in general about modeling and model validation, where, so if I can write it very um, roughly, the modeling is a representation of objects by formal means. And especially, uh, we will be focused on uh, data-driven modeling. And this is about finding the means that are suitable for representing physical objects. Some details, yeah, so now, data-driven modeling uh, is successfully realized with the help of neural networks. And therefore, now we would like first to put the bridge uh, because this new vision and with the traditional uh, vision uh, based on fuzzy reasoning. Uh, as you see uh, what I put here, yeah, so neural networks, yeah, what is, uh, what is the focus, yeah? Um, this is um, about extraction of suitable spaces um, and projection on coordinate maps of these spaces uh, in order to extract features and then use these features for separating objects one from another one. So this is the main focus. In fuzzy reasoning, uh, which uh, is traditionally connected with the system of if-then rules, also, the focus is on feature extraction, but features in that case are characterized using fixed vocabulary, and normally this vocabulary is connected with uh, natural language, of course, restricted, and it is used to characterize projections using uh, restricted terminology, like to be small, medium, big, or whatever, plus various quantifiers. Okay, so this is just to see that there are some connections, but of course they are lying on the uh, plane of um, uh, philosophy, not uh, on the plane of mathematics. And therefore, let's look closely what, uh, how to make both, both things um, working together. Um, Data-driven modeling, so some details. Uh, as we said, uh, it is based on feature extraction. And feature extraction is connected with the forward problem here, um, capital F, uh, that takes model parameters P and produces data so that this um, connection uh, is this correspondence uh, holds true. The inverse problem is to determine the model parameters P uh, that are suitable for producing the data. Uh, very often, um, if not always, the inverse problem is unstable. And in this case, the direct problem is ill posed. And therefore, the focus is how to, um, uh, how to remove this uh, instability. Um, there are, of course, some tools. Uh, some of them are connected with the so-called Tikhonov lemma. I will not uh, cite it. Uh, but um, um, it um, leads to the um, flexible organization of the universe that is not based on only one fixed origin and other, uh, other coordinates are computed with respect to this 
uh, one origin. Uh, so the space, in order to get rid of ill uh, poseness, should be organized as a collection of um, flexible universes, and each one is connected with its own origin. So the problem is how this can be done. Uh, so this is the main motivation, just to propose, uh, first of all, some flexibility in the space organization using uh, actually two techniques. Uh, the one is the general based on manifolds and another is just its possible model that is based on the so-called fuzzy partition of a universe. So therefore the motivation is yeah, to use the theory of Riemann and Hilbert manifolds as a framework and to create functional interpretation based uh, or using language of fuzzy partitions. So this is the useful illustration how we um, pass from uh, one universe, from one space organization that is connected with the uh, one fixed origin. So this is Euclidean uh, space organization. And uh, so now we are focused on um, how space can be um, considered uh, from uh, say local point of view. Yeah. So if space, for example, in this right um, uh, illustration is connected with the so-called client bottom, then uh, as you see, uh, its um, description uh, is uh, mostly non-Euclidean. And uh, here you see the skeleton of the space structure that is connected with uh, the surface uh, that we put uh, in this example. Okay, so some technical details. Yeah, let us start. Yeah, as I said, so we uh, try to show that uh, fuzzy sets and fuzzy partitions are suitable models uh, for um, manifold structures. And therefore we start with a definition of these notions. First of all, fuzzy set. Fuzzy set A in R, so for simplicity or uh, just for um, having all technical tools well defined, we assume that fuzzy set uh, is a uh, set that is defined on the real numbers. Uh, and it is a set of ordered pairs, yeah, uh, uh, like it is uh, denoted here, uh, where A uh, is a continuous map uh, called uh, membership function that fulfills uh, the following properties. Uh, so first of all, it is uh, probably very often, if not always assumed that uh, this um, function has so-called uh, so restricted support. Support is just the uh, part of the real line where this function takes positive values. Uh, such that outside yeah, of this closed interval, it's, um, uh, it is zero. Uh, and then because it is continuous, it can be uh, extended to boundary points like this. Uh, then additionally, if I say set is normal, if uh, there exists some point um, um, within this closed interval uh, where the value is one. Uh, and as it is written, so we call the interval of positive values a support of a fuzzy set, and this is the denotation. Okay, this is just illustration how fuzzy set can be illustrated, and because um, this notion, uh, you know, so um, usually fuzzy set is identified with its membership function. Yeah, so membership function should be specific as we characterized in the definition. But traditionally, because fuzzy sets originated as um, uh, from extension of classical notion of set, uh, they are connected with some specification or with some uh, property of its objects. And here is the illustration of objects that can be characterized as to be close to one. Otherwise, it's just an illustration. Yeah, the membership function is here. For simplicity, it is of triangular shape, but it is not important. Okay, so now about fuzzy partition. And again, so I will probably illustrate it because later we will see the definition, but just for having some uh, impression, yeah. Um, uh, 
uh, we speak about fuzzy partition of one uh, of a certain interval a b and the collection of fuzzy sets with continuous membership functions form this partition with nodes if the following axioms are fulfilled first of all all uh, these uh, we call them uh, fuzzy units or fuzzy or basic functions because this is a certain connection with the theory of generalized functions, but I, I will not use it. Um, uh, so at each node, uh, the value is one. So all sets are normal according to the previous definition. Then each set vanishes outside of the support. Uh, it is increasing on the left hand side, decreasing on the right hand side, and optionally, uh, the so called Ruspini condition uh, is um, requested. This is just reformulation of a partition of unity, and so it is illustrated here. Yeah, uh, here you see some examples of various partitions. Yeah, and um, uh, what um, how they can be uh, captured, uh, I mean, in more details. Um, uh, what is important is that they can be considered as um, uh, as produced from one the so-called generating function. So it is on the below um, given box generating function, such that each partition element is just translation uh, 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 translation and rescaling uh, of this generating function. Yeah, the properties of this uniformity is above, but uh, you know, so semantically, I explained what uh, what does it mean. Uh, so here you can see some uh, useful and uh, very frequently used examples uh, of um, generating functions, uh, as you see a triangle uh, shape and the uh, cosine shape as well. And, and now how uh, these, uh, I mean, fuzzy sets and partitions can be connected with manifolds. First of all, um, there is not only one notion of manifold. I will start with the um, basic one, and this is the topological manifold, uh, which means that uh, it is assumed that we are given um, a topological space M, and we assume that it is can be covered by a collection of open subsets uh, and. and um, such that on each subset we have um, be continuous one to one mapping uh, between uh, this subset and the Euclidean space R to N. This is N dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, and these maps are called coordinate maps or charts. Uh, it is assumed, yeah, that the collection of open subsets covers. Uh, the whole manifold and collection is known uh, as atlas. So this is just the notation of covering. Yeah, and uh, uh, because of B continuity, each coordinate map is invertible. Okay, so this is illustration just for uh, have another example of the uh, manifold surface. This is another illustration of the so-called one manifold. This means that locally, um, uh, this um, uh, manifold, uh, or, yeah, topology on uh, of this uh, construction uh, is uh, homeomorphic to pieces, or uh, better say, pieces of uh, these um, uh, curves. Yeah, um, are uh, homeomorphic to uh, the real line. So the um, coordinate map is given by this um, prescription. Uh, this is just yeah, to show how this can be uh, connected with fuzzy sets. Yeah, look, yeah. So this is if we uh, just put uh, this graph up, uh, upside up, yeah, then we will obtain a graph of a membership function. Uh, what is interesting about one manifolds is that they can be uh, completely characterized by the following four examples. Uh, so the examples are the real line, the half line, the circle, and the closed interval. And the theorem states that any connected one uh, manifold is homeomorphic to one of these four examples. And no two of them are homeomorphic to each other. Now here, our purpose is to connect fuzzy set with uh, one um, manifold uh, structure. Therefore, uh, yeah, and find some uh, 
some properties or some uh, conditions where this connection can be established. Therefore, we assume that A is a normal fuzzy set in R with support AB, where at least one boundary uh, among A and B uh, is finite. And it is normal at some finite, uh, at some point within the uh, AB. Then, uh, half intervals, so denoted like this, are connected non compact one uh, manifold. Uh, that uh, that are homeomorphic to uh, the half interval zero one, and the restriction on each uh, half interval is a coordinate map from the corresponding interval to uh, again half zero one, if and only if a is a uh, or this restriction is a monotone bijection. So this puts some restriction on uh, how fuzzy set can be um, can be defined in order to serve as a coordinate map of the manifold connected with its support. Yeah. Uh, so this means that this um, uh, yeah when we uh, characterized uh, fuzzy set or especially fuzzy partition units and spoke that they should be. Uh, monotone on uh, various sides uh, with respect to the um, with respect to separation of uh, using the point of normality, then this monotonicity should be strong. So this is the uh, consequence of uh, this uh, proposition. Okay, let's yeah. Uh, another proposition is about fuzzy partition and the corresponding uh, um, manifold. So here um, we state that if we are given a fuzzy partition of AB where every normal fuzzy set uh, has this subinterval as a support and this point as a uh, point proving normality, then this collection defines one manifold with this number of connected non-compact components, and they are denoted here, such that the coordinate uh, maps are uh, corresponding restrictions. Um, this is the denotation how manifold or, uh, or generated from uh, fuzzy partition uh, will be denoted uh, further on. And the uh, proposition says that if we have two partition with the um, comparable, say, um, with the same index of, um, uh, of partition units, uh, then uh, these partitions are homomorphic. And now, uh, so this is about, um, um, let me say, topological, um, a kernel or topological essence yeah, of the uh, of two space organizations. Yeah, so we compared uh, two spaces, one with fuzzy partition, another with um, uh, manifold uh, components, uh, and we showed that uh, they are in uh, in a strong connection. Yeah, at least we showed that. Uh, if we have a partition, then uh, we can speak about the manifold uh, space with the manifold structure. Uh, the next step is to uh, allow um, uh, to use coordinate maps for, uh, for measuring either um, closeness or distance. And therefore, uh, the um, uh, manifold construction is enriched uh, in order to uh, have the so-called uh, Riemannian uh, manifold with the positive definite inner product. Um, normally Riemannian manifold is finite dimensional uh, or Hilbert manifold, and this is uh, the focus of um, our uh, special proposal, yeah, uh, where the letter is a separable Hausdorff space in which each point has a neighborhood homeomorphic to an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. And so our purpose uh, in the next part uh, to show that the space with a fuzzy partition is a functional model of a Hilbert manifold. So here you can see uh, technical details of uh, fuzzy partition that will be used 
uh, in order to establish uh, the uh, Hilbert manifold structure yeah, on, on a set with fuzzy partition. Uh, okay, probably I will explain. Yeah, so in this case, fuzzy partition is the collection of fuzzy sets, and they are identified with these uh, set of functions. And this is uniform. We can see the only uniform fuzzy partition. Uh, this means that uh, the following properties are fulfilled. So each uh, partition unit is continuous on R. They exist uh, H such that, again, the support um, is local. Uh, then at uh, each central point, yes, say, uh, we have the property of normality. Uh, and uh, so, and this is the, uh, so the last properties are about symmetry with respect to the point of normality. Uh, and uh, the last is the uh, translation invariance yeah, in a certain sense. So all this, uh, so this collection is a uniform fuzzy partition and it can be characterized using one function for, with two variables. Uh, so the uh, description uh, is uh, like this. Um, that is called the representing kernel. So we can formulate the following proposition. Uh, if we have a uniform fuzzy partition of R, then the following function that was introduced above uh, um, is a continuous symmetrical kernel, and it fulfills the following property. OK, so now the um, uh, how we can establish the Hilbert uh, manifold, it is enough actually to uh, characterize the inner product. Again, we assume that we have uniform fuzzy partition with its representing kernel. Uh, so here KFP means fuzzy partition FP, these uh, two um, letters, characters. Uh, then this partition determines a Hilbert manifold such that for every x this corresponding tangent space consists of square integrable functions defined on the um, closure of, of each support set uh, and the inner product is given by this prescription uh, where this is the so-called volume and this volume is independent uh, from the selection of x the Laplace Beltrami operator is very useful um, tool, uh, and uh, besides of its um, applications in image processing for manifolds, each uh, so the value of uh, Laplace Beltrami operator shows where local origins should be placed. Yeah, so uh, I will not go into the details, but um, uh, so the higher the value of Laplacian Beltrami operator is, yeah, the more uh, suitable to put the local origin in the um, point where uh, we, we have this high value. So this is just semantical meaning and why uh, our interest is uh, just in the definition of this type of uh, operator. Uh, according to the general definition, this operator is a linear operator and it takes functions to functions and defined uh, as a, a composition of two adjoint operators divergence and the gradient. Uh, some details are given here. Again, so now our space, yeah, because we showed that the space with partition uh, is just uh, the uh, Hilbert um, uh, manifold space, uh, saying these words, yeah, then we can be fixed on uh, the terminology connected with fuzzy partition. So f uh, is a square integrable function. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, um, uh, just to um, just to remark uh, that uh, here f is um, is an object in the uh, manifold uh, H connected with the whole space R, uh, which has a single global chart and where uh, the uh, inner product is uh, defined in the traditional uh, way. 
then the difference operator from one manifold to another one. So this is the manifold where our functions uh, are considered and this is manifold connected with fuzzy partition so the difference operator yeah is just this map and it is defined uh, as follows uh, yeah where this uh, w uh, stands for the representing kernel of the partition and the adjoint to d yeah, so we uh, here we are introducing two operators. One is the difference, another is the divergence. And the divergence is uh, defined as to be a joint with respect to uh, actually two inner products on uh, both um, on both manifolds. The theorem states that if partition is uniform, then the adjoint operator uh, has this form, so this is the representation, and because of that, the Laplace Beltrami operator as a composition of divergence and uh, gradient is uh, introduced using this expression. So here you see uh, how the partition elements uh, actually are used uh, in the representation of the Laplace Beltrami operator. Yeah, so as we explained, they, um, uh, they give us uh, the um, uh, somehow the, the weights. Yeah, uh, I mean, for inner product, uh, is, it is just weighted in a product, but the meaning of weights um, uh, is extracted from the uh, fuzzy partition. Okay, and now some words about applications. Um, so this is how Laplacian uh, operator is used in the problem of dimensionality reduction. Um, in order to apply, uh, I mean, in order to really uh, reduce the dimensionality of um, uh, represented or, or considered objects, uh, it is useful to make projections on uh, eigen functions of uh, Laplacians that are associated with the smallest uh, eigen values. So I will not uh, probably uh, discuss the uh, details. Yeah, and yeah, so this slide is um, useful uh, because um, uh, partially it explains why uh, we um, demanded uh, that our partition, I mean partition units are symmetrical with respect to the uh, central point. Uh, because this as a consequence of this uh, requirement, we have symmetrical kernels and symmetrical kernels are known um, uh, to have uh, real uh, eigenvalues. Yeah, and, um, uh, and therefore, eigenvectors also uh, are, uh, have real components. So this is the um, most important uh, result yeah, of our uh, of our definition. Uh, and the project of on eigenfunctions of Laplacians yeah, are known as features. So this is just the connection with our probably starting motivation when we spoke about um, data-driven approach that is focused on extraction of features. Okay, so and I am also, yeah, uh, almost uh, at the last part of um, today's presentation. Um, and I will speak how we use um, this technique in experiments with financial time series. I will try to explain some details and to connect uh, the uh, applications with uh, theoretical background. Mm. Uh, okay, so yeah, look, this is the uh, time series uh, that is characterized as to have uh, high volatility. Uh, the uh, purpose, the main uh, problem which we uh, have is to make an analysis. This means that to find uh, its um, uh, approximate representation uh, using features, uh, using extracted features, 
in order to um, work with these times in, in order to make the analysis so what what does it mean uh, normally time series are compared one uh, to another one uh, and um, also uh, another very important problem is uh, how uh, they can be predicted i mean for the future uh, for the future time period uh, and uh, therefore uh, uh, each time series that is given as a collection of uh, points depending uh, in time um, is requested to be suitably modeled and this is the problem how we can model the time series in order to uh, in order to say something useful about its uh, behavior Okay, so what we are using, we are uh, trying yeah, to organize, uh, first of all, yeah, so we use uh, uh, terminology that, uh, is, um, that is used in this field. Uh, in connection with uh, the previous theory, what we are looking, we are looking for the closest manifold uh, that um, can be used in making a formal representation. The closest manifold, what does it mean that we are looking for the closest manifold? Uh, this means that we are looking where to place local origins. In this terminology, local origins are called as key points, so-called, yeah. Uh, and uh, how to organize the coordinate system around each, uh, so in this terminology, key point. Um, and uh, of course, uh, this cannot be done in one step. Uh, but what is important is uh, that, um, yeah, first of all, uh, we, we try to make a, a uniform fuzzy partition, yeah, because we saw that uh, the fuzzy partition uh, can be also characterized in terms of manifolds. Um, but uh, for technical reason, working with fuzzy partition is easier than working with uh, abstract uh, notion of manifold. And therefore, what we are doing, we organize fuzzy partition and look for um, the, those partition elements that are characterized with the highest values of corresponding Laplacian operator. And uh, uh, the points where these values uh, are extremal, we put our local origin. Yeah, I tried to explain how this uh, value of Laplacian is corresponding with the uh, selection of uh, position of local origin. So here you see uh, that if our partition um, uh, is uniform and support um, is, uh, is uh, relative small, then we can extract uh, many uh, key points or many candidates for placing local origins there. Uh, here you see that uh, these key points are depicted using red dots. Yeah, uh, black dots also are here and they're used for some filtering, I will not explain. And then the purpose is uh, because you see, so yeah, in, in this red curve, yeah, we see the behavior of Laplacian. So we can really uh, justify that where Laplacian has an extremal value, then it is useful to put a key point, to select key point uh, just at, at this point. Yeah, this is the correspondence. Yeah, and then we are looking for the most active key points. Uh, means that if we uh, extend uh, supports, then the uh, key point is still active, yeah, actually. And we continue this process until the Laplacian is almost flat. So this is... Uh, yeah, probably the uh, the last uh, yeah, slide. Yeah, yeah, where um, uh, supports are uh, very extended, and in this case, we were able to extract only three. In this case, uh, key points. Yeah, but what is important is that positions of key points um, are preserved. Yeah, this means that this key point is also key point for. Um, partitions with smaller supports. Yeah, so this is for us the key how we can make a reconstruction. Reconstruction is based um, uh, back forward 
um, and um, and using the aggregation. Yeah, actually, yeah, I will not uh, give the full details. Yeah, uh, but as you see, so the reconstruction uh, is used. Uh, uh, so in terminology of coordinate maps, shapes of coordinate maps. Yeah, in, uh, in other words, it uses the shapes of um, uh, partition units. Uh, and for this experiment, uh, only triangular shapes were uh, selected. So uh, here you see various reconstructions uh, according to uh, the uh, uh, lengths of uh, supports. Yeah, uh, you see this is uh, for the uh, first uh, narrow partition then when we enlarge uh, supports of partition we have this type of reconstruction and so on so forth this is the uh, last one as you see very uh, very rough but if we aggregate all of them then we obtain very nice representation uh, look this is on the upper uh, uh, graph uh, where the uh, this criterion uh, root mean square error uh, is quite good for this time series. And if we compare yeah, with the reconstruction produced by a neural network, uh, then we see that the error is much higher, almost four times higher. Yeah. So this means, yeah, and just to compare, yeah, uh, in our reconstruction, we used uh, something like 110 key points. And um, uh, uh, in comparison, this neural network used more than 4,000 um, uh, neural, uh, neurons. Yeah, so you see that the complexity of the first reconstruction is less than uh, that of the second one. So this is just yeah, the piece of the theory which I would like to share with you today. So we spoke uh, about the connection um, between spaces uh, with fuzzy partitions and uh, one manifolds. And also we showed that um, spaces with fuzzy partitions can be taken as functional models of Hilbert manifolds. And then we extracted some uh, representative or some useful technical operators like uh, Laplace and um, you know, Laplace Beltrami operator and showed how it is useful in uh, applications and we focused on time series yeah uh, actually we have other applications uh, which are similar to this one but they are in the progress and this is about um, about uh, images actually similar technique can be used for making analysis of um, um, objects in higher uh, dimensions so we Today we are focused on one-dimensional objects, but as I said, similar technique can be applied for 2D images and even for 3D shapes. Yeah, but as I said, so this is now our active research in that direction. So thank you for your attention. Yeah, I finished.